National Park Service, Lincoln Home National Historic Site. Hello everyone. For the past two weeks, we have talked about two incredible first ladies, Jackie Kennedy and Eleanor Roosevelt. But this week, we won't be covering another first lady. Instead, we'll be talking about a student, Maya Lin. At the time of our story, Maya wasn't famous. She didn't have a lot of wealth or influence. All she had was a vision and a desire to use that vision and her talents to honor those who had fought, served, and died for this country. Not unlike how Abraham Lincoln wanted to honor those who had given their lives at the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863. What was Maya's vision and how did she honor these soldiers? That's what we'll be learning about in today's reading with a ranger. Reading with a ranger, Women's History Month, 2021. Ranger sitting in Lincoln Home's sitting room, reading a book. Come and sit near, the adventure is here, because it's reading with a ranger. Maya Lin, Artist Architect of Light and Lines. Written by Jeanne Walker Harvey, illustrated by Dao Fimaruk. Two young Asian children run on a wooded hill. The shadows of the trees seem to create stripes like on a lizard's back. In the woods by her childhood home, Maya Lin played with her brother and explored and climbed the many rolling hills, one she named the lizard's back. Can you see the lizard in the rolling hills? Maya, as a young child, sits on a rock and looks up at the birds and squirrels in the leafy trees. On long walks alone, she searched for birds in the forest. Maya sat still as a statue, hoping to tame rabbits, raccoons, chipmunks, and squirrels. Maya and her brother as young children playing chess. In her house full of light and open spaces, Maya read books and played chess with her brother. Maya making model buildings out of cardboard, cereal boxes, and juice cartons. And with paper and scraps, she built tiny towns. Maya making a paper building while her mother watches with a smile. Her parents had fled China at a time when people were told what to be and how to think. Her parents never told Maya what to be or how to think. Maya as an older child, watching her mother write. Maya trying to sculpt clay as her father forms a pot. Maya grew up with art. Her father was an artist who made art with clay. Her mother was a poet who made art with words. Maya as a teenager, forming the clay pot with her hands. She watched her father form a pot from a mound of clay without plans or drawings. Maya, too, thought with her hands as well as with her mind. What do you like to create? Do you like to draw or paint? Maybe you like to write stories or make music. Maybe you like to bake or cook and make delicious things to share with others. We all have different ways we can be creative and express ourselves, just like Maya. Maya as a young woman standing in a library, looking up at stained glass semicircle windows. The library is of soft brown hues, lit with soft golden lights. The library pillars are of smudged stripes of gold, black, brown, and orange. One day when Maya looked at the patterns of light and lines on the ceiling of her college library, she imagined she would become an architect who created buildings with art, science, and math. An architect is a person who designs buildings and other structures. Maya wanted to create things that people can experience. Maya walking past different buildings of different styles, including the Greek Parthenon with its crumbling white marble columns, a grand building with clean stone slabs, marble statue over the entry, and golden domed roof, a triumphal arch with two smaller arches on the side of a main, taller arch, British and French flags flying on top. An Asian-style low palace with gold roofs, red columns, blue walls, and a peacock design in the center. And a Scandinavian-style four-story building with paned windows and balconies. While studying overseas, Maya wandered through countries and cities, gazing at buildings of all types, new and old, learning all she could. Maya and other students looking at a bulletin board with a competition flyer pinned to it. In her last year of college, Maya entered a contest to design a memorial to honor soldiers who had died during the Vietnam War. Six soldiers walking through a jungle-like area. Helicopters fly overhead. Contest rules said the memorial must be blend with a park setting and include the name of every soldier who died fighting or was missing. Almost 58,000 names. The Vietnam War was a war between the governments of North and South Vietnam, with the United States supporting the South. 
Many Americans grew to oppose the war for many reasons. These rules rang true to Maya. She knew the power of names. Maya believed that a name brings back all the memories of a person, more than a photo of a moment in time. Maya stands on a field, looking through a small digital camera. In the glow of the autumn sun, Maya walked across a field dotted with trees, the site of the future memorial. Looking through the camera frame, there are images of a giant knife cutting a crack into the earth, and then a gleaming dark mirror filling up the crack. Through her camera's eye, she imagined a knife slicing open the earth. In her mind, she saw the cut in the earth healing over time to a polished edge, covered from top to bottom with names, an edge that reflected sky and grass and the people who visited the memorial. Maya molding shapes with mashed potatoes and clay. Back at school, Maya sculpted a model with mashed potatoes, then with clay. Maya sketching at an angled desk. She sketched a soft space of greens and blues. Before mailing her entry, she put her thoughts in an essay. Sketches of Maya's design include a drawing of a wide upside down V shape cut into the ground at an angle so that the ground slants downwards from the endpoints toward the center tip, with the tip being the deepest into the ground. The resulting wall on the two sides of the V are a bold black against the soft blue-green of the ground. Another sketch shows that standing at the lowest part, the tip of the V, one can see the Washington Monument in the distance when facing towards one corner of the V. She wrote that her long, polished wall would be a quiet place to remember all those who had died during the war, a place to be experienced by walking down, then up, past names that seem to go on forever. Rows of contest designs with accompanying essays are lined up in an airplane hangar. A small group of people examine Maya's design and essay. The contest received so many entries, enough to fill an airplane hangar. Lots of famous architects and artists entered. The names of the contestants were hidden from view. A man at a podium announces the name Maya Lin, and the three men standing with him look at Maya in surprised amusement and one in shock. Maya stands alone facing them. Out of the 1,421 entries, Maya's design was chosen. Simple yet strong, creative and new. But when they found out Maya was the winner, the judges were shocked. She wasn't famous. She was a young woman still in school. Maya was surprised as the judges. All was excitement at first, but then people objected. Some said her design looked like a bat, a boomerang, a black gash of shame. Their angry words stung Maya. For months, public hearings were held. Some people wanted to change the design. Maya was young, but she was brave. She didn't back down. What do you think of Maya's design? Do you think it does a good job of honoring those who gave their lives during the Vietnam War? Back during the time that it was first, uh, the contest was first held, many people disliked the design because it was very different from traditional designs of memorials at the time. With its dark, minimalist, and low to the ground design, some people thought it portrayed the war as shameful and dishonored those who gave their lives. But Maya interpreted it differently. She saw it as a wound that is closed and healing and said, I just wanted to thank those who had served. Um, they, can't, they can never return, but they should be remembered. In the end, Maya stood up despite the opposition and stood by her design. Have you ever experienced a similar position where your vision was questioned or disagreed against? What would have you done in her position? Maya watches the construction of the monument in a hard hat. A crane lifts the gleaming black panels into place. Finally, her design was approved. Maya worked with a team of architects and engineers who devised plans to excavate the land, build the wall. The granite was cut, polished, and engraved with the soldiers' names. The earth was dug up. Maya watched the panels, suspended in space, set in place. Maya stands in front of a panel, her hand on the panel. The first time Maya visited the finished wall, she searched for the name of a, the father of a friend. When she touched the name, she cried, just as she knew others would. Crowds of people visit the completed memorial and stare at the black, shiny panels with engraved names. Thousands came that Veterans Day to see and touch and remember. Salutes, hands on hearts, honoring. And every day since then, visitors had done the same. Maya, with short haircut, holding a roll of paper. 
The Vietnam Veterans Memorial was the first of Mai's many works of art and architecture. Memorials, sculptures, structures, and spaces, inside and out. Each piece is different, but all share Maya's vision. She wants people to be a part of the art. Look, touch, read, walk around, sit by, think about. And just like when she was a child who named a hill the lizard's back, Maya names her projects, often words from nature. Names such as sounding stones, topo, the wave field, 10 degrees north, and reading a garden. Examples of her designs, including a line of spherical glass shrubs, a set of angular stone shapes with a small hole in each, a grassy area shaped in repeating small hills, a stone slab with a world map, and a seating area with an L-shaped pool of water with words engraved on the pool's walls. Can you guess which names match up with which designs? And after naming each piece, the final step in shaping her artwork, Maya Lin, the artist architect, is ready to dream, think again, and create something new. Maya sits at a table sketching. The end. In this story, we can see how using one's talents and vision can help memorialize, honor, and thank those who have served, like Lincoln did with his Gettysburg Address and Maya did with her design. Not everyone may agree with our vision or understand what we're trying to say. Abraham Lincoln received criticism as well as praise for his speech and as we learned today, Maya received opposition to her design. But despite this, both their ways of honoring and memorializing the fallen have endured and become icons in American history. This month, during Women's History Month, we have learned about three amazing women. Jackie Kennedy, who saved an American icon and set a precedent for the preservation of American history. Eleanor Roosevelt, who fought for equal rights, human rights, and equality. Amaya Lynn, who used her vision to honor those who had served and died during the Vietnam War. Through these stories, we have learned about compassion, courage, determination, creativity, and leadership. And we hope through these stories you've learned a little something and might be inspired to follow in their footsteps. Thank you so much for joining us with this special reading for Ranger series and happy Women's History Month. Book featured, Maya Lin, Artist Architect of Light and Lines. Written by Jeanne Walker Harvey. Illustrated by Dao Fumirak. Music by Isaiah Frader and Lori Hoffman. Edited by Daniel Guttis. Learn more about the Vietnam Veterans Memorial at www.nps.gov slash vive slash index dot htm. National Park Service, Lincoln Home National Historic Site.